This is Carlisle from Carlisle's Picks giving you guys an update on the Paul Walker and Roger Rodas crash that happened in Valencia, California just this last past Saturday. I already talked about not drawing conclusions and talking about stuff you don't know about if you weren't there. People are saying all kinds of stuff. They were racing and all this kind of stuff. Fast and Furious was a movie franchise. This is an actual person. You got to separate character from person. All right. Now, if they were in fact racing, fine. But let's wait until we confirm that. Let's not make assumptions based on movies. Told you guys about this already. Now we have security footage that clearly shows from my perspective that they were not in fact racing because click on the link in below you'll see the video but you will see that all of a sudden you just see like the car hits the tree you don't really see the car it's not in detail it's kind of far away but you can see the impact you can see the smoke coming up and you don't see any other cars now normally in a, in a street racing kind of scenario if one car crashes the other car is not going to notice right away most likely so they're going to go a little bit before they kind of notice the other car crash and slow down when you're racing you can't really be paying attention to all kinds of other stuff you're focused on winning and you're focused on not crashing so you're not going to immediately notice you know what's happening to the other car that you're racing if they start to kind of lose control so there's going to be a delay there and you're going to be going very fast so even a slight delay of a second to two seconds you're going to cover a lot of distance so in the video you would see another car kind of fly by a little bit and then slow down and turn around but we don't see any other car we only see just this impact and this smoke no other cars involved so it looks like they were not in fact racing highly unlikely that there was any racing involved however this seems to connect and also the the cars you see in the video are all coming from the opposite direction which again follows the storyline that we've been told basically what seems to have happened is this had nothing to do directly with the winter drive or charity drive that was planned for that day this looks like after the drive that Paul Walker and Roger Rodas decided to go for a drive in this great car, the Porsche Carrera GT. It's an awesome car, one of my favorite cars. So they decided to go for a drive in this car. I'm told it's about a 20 minute drive and the area where they crashed is not too far away from some really nice roads. So you know what? Talk about dying, doing what you love. They probably had a great time in that car. It's a great car. It's, it's a very exciting car to drive. However, it is a very demanding car. But bottom line is they probably had a great time on those roads and they actually made it almost all the way back. This, it just blows your mind that they would go and, and probably had a great time in this car and then get so close to their final destination and then they crash you know, just around the corner from the shop. I mean, it's crazy. So in the video, you see all the other cars coming from the opposite direction. They're really close, so they would have heard the impact. And then everybody comes to see what's going on. And now, th let's get back to these guys that shot this video. I never liked that video from the get-go. And a lot of people made comments about them not trying to help. Now, I don't focus on that because they were saying that the guy was dead. That's what I focus on. Now, their decision not to help the guy, that's on them but it's the saying that they were dead. Now we can see from the video and somebody was trying to back them up and saying, oh, they were probably burning, you know, for quite a while for, you know, before they showed up and you know, blah, 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 you know, so how, how could they survive? Even though people survive, you know, severe burning. I know burning, you, you, you know, survival rates are not that high for burning victims, but the video clearly shows that these guys arrived pretty quickly right after the accident. So there's no way they could have known that they were dead. They hadn't even gotten close to the car. How do you from across the street determine that this guy is dead? And I don't care how scary the accident looks. You don't know that. So that's the only thing I have a problem with. Now, if you determine that they might be alive, you're not sure, but you're not willing to risk your life, that's on you. It's your life to risk. Some people may want to judge you for not do you, do you being the hero or whatever. It's your life. So it's your decision whether you're going to go and try and rescue this person or not. But to discount them, to dismiss them, to just say, oh, they're dead. Based on what? That's the thing I have a problem with. Because maybe by you saying that they're dead, maybe somebody else could have done something to help. But they hear that you said they're dead and they take your word for it. And because of you saying that, maybe somebody doesn't do something. You know, somebody's like, oh, okay, they're dead. So I'm not going to go risk my life for someone who I know is already dead. And then people who, are, who aren't even there, online, internet commenters, commenting on forums and videos talking about, oh, there was an explosion, blah, blah. You weren't there. Now we have the video that clearly shows that... 
there was no explosion initially it looks like the explosion happened later on so you have this impact and then this kind of fire comes kind of right away but there was no explosion until later on so uh, high potential that they could have been alive at the time of the video in that car and and possibly they could have been rescued however again the guys who shot the video, they're not firemen. That's not their job to go and, and risk their lives to rescue someone. But again, it's just a discounting of them as being dead w without any any kind of evidence. Based on this video, it looks like they were not racing. Also, the investigation is suggesting that they're only going by 50 miles per hour, which is only five miles per hour over the 45 mile per hour speed limit. So as far as the theory of them speeding and, and driving recklessly, uh, that's kind of throwing that at, out the window. That's not to say what they were doing. We still got to wait on the investigation. We don't know what was actually happening just before the accident. Some people are saying maybe a car might have swerved in front of them. We don't know, and we don't see any swerve marks. We also see that there was some kind of a fluid leak on the ground before the impact. So people are saying steering fluid leaking. Now your steering fluid leaking can lead to kind of uh, inconsistent steering, but I don't think it's going to get to the point where you can't steer at all. We're going to confirm that. Again, we're going to be doing a video on the Porsche Carrera GT. We're going to have the car on the show, and we're going to show you around the technology in the car, the performance, and we're going to go over the safety features. So we'll, we'll learn more about the car. But I don't believe the steering fluid leak would, would have had them, you know, oh, not be able to steer but the question is why do you have these, these 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 skid marks that go straight no swerving at all and then they crash so it's like did they not try to swerve out of it but it could have been brake fluid now that's another issue maybe brake fluid was leaking some kind of fluid is on the ground before the crash and we got to wait to find out what that was about the other issue is the media is showing these shots of talking about oh they were uh there were these uh, skid marks that look like donuts like they were doing donuts Go to Google Maps, pull up the crash location, and look at those skid marks from 2011. Why is the media talking about skid marks from 2011, talking about uh, how it could be an indication of, of what? It's a popular spot where guys go to drift and do all kinds of crazy stuff there. There's going to be tons of skid marks all over the place. So you've got to, again, wait for the investigation. They've got to compare the rubber from the skid marks to the rubber on the car, and make a match. Until they do that, all the skid marks are irrelevant. Now, another theory that I'm seeing online or story that I'm hearing online is that they went around the corner too fast and the rear end kicked out. They kind of tried to correct the slide, overcorrected and lost control. Where is all the skid marks that confirm this? And who is saying this? And how do they know? You got to be very careful when you have these kind of stories. You got all kinds of people saying all kinds of stuff. And a lot of times you, you'll hear things that are completely false. Like I believe CNN was one of the agencies that actually talked about a car swerving in front of them. Where is that other car? Where are the swerve marks that have been confirmed from some car? I mean, who said, who's, who's saying this stuff? You know, they're putting stuff out there and it's like, where are you getting this information from? Is it confirmed? Is it unconfirmed? They all want to get the story, but come on. The video clearly shows it looked like there was no racing involved. I don't see any other car. It looks like a single car collision. Now that may not end up being the case. We don't know. So until the investigation is complete, let's reserve our judgments in terms of what happened. All we can say right now is based on the video, it does not appear that they were racing. Based on the evidence that's coming from the investigation, it does not appear that they were going at a high rate of speed. Now why did the car crash? We just don't know and we're not going to know until the investigation is complete. So let's just all reserve our judgment until that happens. And let's all never forget the three children that are without parents right now because of this incident. The wife, bottom line, this is a very, very sad story. And I did not know Paul Walker personally, but based on my research, it looks like my instincts about him were correct. Uh, there was actually a story about he actually bought a wedding ring for a stranger that couldn't afford it. I don't know much about Roger Rodas, but from everything I'm reading, it looks like two great guys. They're family guys. Just a sad story. You're watching Carlisle's Picks, and if I have any more updates, I will give it to you guys on this channel. And also, again, we're going to be having the Porsche Carrera GT on this channel later this week. So definitely subscribe for that. Thanks for watching.